Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. Today I am playing with the brand new OM System M Zuiko 90mm f3.5 macro lens. Now, because it's wintertime in Canada, all the flowers, all the insects are either hibernating or dead. So we're gonna be looking for little things around the house that we can do some macro experiments with. But no, I am also gonna go get some portraits. I'm gonna get some other shots as well. Don't you worry. Now this is a dedicated macro lens and it gives us 180 millimeter focal length in full frame equivalent terms. And I only mention that because in full frame we did have a lot of these longer telephoto macros like 180 millimeter macros or 200 millimeter macros. And they gave you exceptionally long working distance which is really nice but still typically one to one macro life size reproduction for a full frame sensor. But this lens is actually giving us just on its own two to one life size reproduction for a micro four third sensor. So it looks like you're even much closer and with accessories, I can push that to four to one. So we have some potential to do some very interesting close-ups here with this lens. Let's get started. Now, although the 90 millimeter is physically long for a micro four thirds lens, it's still very manageable to carry around. Quite lightweight though, 450 grams, uh, you know, quarter of an oct, actually under that. This is of course weather sealed, 62 millimeter filter thread on the front is nice. This lens actually has some really nice features. And the first one that we really like is the manual focus with a clutch. Now this not only is an easy way to disengage autofocus, but it also gives you a distance scale as well as your macro life size reproduction right there on the lens. So that's really handy. Keep in mind though, this manual focus is still by wires, so there's that latency and lag. You know, if I turn this to a macro reproduction, it takes a little while for the actual lens to catch up. So that could be a little bit tricky, but honestly, for most macro, you're gonna be doing manual focusing with macro rails, for example, like I'm using today. And in that regard, it just, it's much easier to do. Now, because this is a pro series lens, we do have some nice features, customizable button here. This lens does have its own image stabilization, and that does work in conjunction with the IBIS and the body. Now, if I was hand holding for macros, nothing too extreme, you could probably pull it off. I don't know, maybe you guys are on heavy sedatives or you're trained snipers or something, your mileage will vary. But what I do like is even if I am hand holding this but using a flash or having it on a tripod, it's nice to have the image stabilization just to steady out any shakes and jitters so that it's easier to compose and focus with. So regardless, it's a nice thing to have. Now we look at the distance scale here, we've got our focus limiter from our regular focusing distances, or you can limit it from 0.25 meters to half a meter, uh, or you can then engage the S super macro mode. Now it's important to understand that even if you're manually focusing, if you wanna go to two times life size reproduction, you actually do have to click it into S macro. You'll actually briefly hear some motors move, some elements inside the lens move, and now it's engaged for its closest macro capabilities. So in super macro, we can get that two to one life size reproduction, but if you wanna go further or I should say closer, you can use their teleconverters. So it'll accept the Olympus MC14 and MC20 1.4 and two times teleconverters. And with the MC20, I mean, yeah, we're losing a lot of light, we're into diffraction and such, but we are also getting a four to one life size reproduction equivalent. That is pretty incredible. So next I wanna talk about the 90 millimeters autofocusing capabilities. You might think, okay, well for macro, I'm just gonna manually focus most of the time. And that's absolutely true. Traditionally, autofocus actually really sucked when you're trying to do close-up shots, but as you can see here, this lens actually does autofocus on our OM-1 body actually quite effectively, even up close. So that was really nice to see. Yes, I would still manually focus or use macro rails for everything, but, a 90 millimeter micro four thirds lens can also be a really handy, uh, you know, long distance compressed face portraits, maybe even the occasional distance shot like wildlife or something like that. So in those situations, the autofocus is also very precise and very quick. And so overall, it's nice to have that capability. So let's talk about bokeh here now. So when shooting at regular distances, not up close macro, actually the bokeh is quite beautiful. Wide open at f3.5, you can see a little bit of a cat's eye effect in the corners, but that goes away as soon as you start to stop down. And overall, even stop down the bokeh, your specular highlights are nice and round, look quite smooth, and transitions from in focus to out of focus are very beautiful. And so I could absolutely see using this as an interesting portrait lens, for example. Now when we go to close up, especially extreme close up, you can see here now our bokeh changes quite a bit. So in this actual peacock eye, you can see that we're actually getting lots of onion rings. The bokeh looks quite harsh and very busy. And so even in a situation where you're up close, you can have situations where if you've got specular highlights, it looks very dramatic. If you don't have the specular highlights, it's definitely smoother looking, but just keep in mind that we feel the bokeh character changes from up close rather than regular focusing distances. 
So let's talk about loca next, those longitudinal chromatic aberrations where your out of focus areas pick up a color cast. It's very difficult to get rid of in post. We don't want it. And especially with an extreme macro lens where our depth of field gets so shallow, if there is loca present, it can really be quite distracting. Luckily, the OM system 90 millimeter macro has very little. As you can see here, it's very well controlled. Slight color cast to the foreground and background areas, but honestly, nothing to worry about. We were really pleased to see that not be an issue. Now, Micro Four Thirds macro lenses have been notorious for having very minimal working distance, meaning that the front of the lens has to be very close to the subject that you're shooting. Here, we're still pretty close. We don't get that much working distance, about two and a half inches from the front of the lens, close enough that I probably wouldn't keep the hood on for a lot of macro situations, but it's still enough distance that I can get some light in on the sides. And again, remember that's only when we're doing our most extreme close-up macros. If you're doing one-to-one -one or even less than that, you actually get a fair amount of working space. So overall, a nice improvement over a lot of the other macros that I've used for Micro Four Thirds. Okay, but is the lens sharp? Well, we're gonna go to our test charts and we wanted to shoot this on the highest resolution sensor we had available to really push things. So we actually shot on a Panasonic GH6 just for the test charts, 25 megapixels. Okay, so first let's take a look at the center of the chart here shot at F3.5. And as you can see, already tons of detail, very sharp, good contrast, stopping down at F5.6. I mean, if there's any improvement, it's incredibly minor. I really don't see much. Now, when we go to the corner shooting F3.5, again, very sharp, even wide open and stopping down, similar news, not really any improvement. I would say actually, even when you're focused in the center, this lens is very sharp across the whole field. So we're not really having field curvature when we're shooting at regular distances. In fact, the only thing I would say about that is just watch your aperture. On Micro Four Thirds, you certainly don't want to stop down anywhere past, well, F8, really. I mean, even F8, you're going to start to see some diffraction and the image will get soft. If you need more depth of field, that's where focus stacking will come into play. But overall, this lens optically performs very well in terms of sharpness. Now with this lens being $1,500 USD, at least at the time of the release of this video, it is a pricey lens, especially compared to a lot of the other Micro Four Thirds macro lenses. But I also think that this lens is aimed at the more advanced macro photographer or enthusiast. And when you then consider its focal range and how close you can get, it's actually totally in line with a lot of the other high-end macro lenses available for other platforms. I think we have to keep in mind that this is a unique product and we haven't really quite seen anything like this for Micro Four Thirds in one package. And we got 90 millimeter focal Focal length, we've got decent working distance, that two to one life size reproduction, rugged build, image stabilized, and effective autofocus even in up close shots. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are gonna adapt things, right? They're gonna put on Canon MP65s with adapters, or Laowa macro lenses, use extension tubes and all that. And you can do some really beautiful macro that way. But to have everything in one lens, giving the photographer just one tool that gives you excellent macro capabilities without having to have a whole bunch of other stuff, well, that is pretty special. We don't see that very often. Well, that pretty much does it for me, but you know, please take the time to check out our Instagram and our Twitter. You'll see the links there also. You can see the macro shots that I took on this lens as well as some portraits and other stuff at deepyearview.com. That link is in the description below. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe to the channel and then we will see you again shortly for another episode of Deep Your View TV.